Meghan Markle and Prince Harry have waved to Fijian well-wishers from the balcony of the Grand Pacific Hotel, in a move that has drawn comparisons to the Queen and Prince Philip who greeted crowds from the same sport during their visit to Fiji more than 50 years ago. The Duke and Duchess of Sussex, who announced last week that Meghan is expecting their first child, smiled as they waved to royal fans from the balcony of the hotel. The moment is strikingly similar to the Queen and Philip's balcony wave during their trip to Fiji in 1953 as part of the Queen's overseas tour following her coronation. The monarch began her reign with a tour of Commonwealth nations, including Fiji. The Queen and the Duke of Edinburgh visited 13 countries between November 1953 and May 1954, setting off just months after the Queen's coronation. Meghan stunned in a cream dress by Australian label Zimmerman and an elegant Stephen Jones hat as she stepped out on the famous balcony. The Duchess wore a pair of earrings gifted by the Queen, in another nod to Her Majesty. Harry looked dashing in a grey suit, with his military medals pinned to his chest. Hundreds of people gathered to catch a glimpse of the royal couple. The moment comes after Harry and Meghan attended a welcome ceremony earlier today. The Duke and Duchess sat on a raised dios for the 45-minute ceremony, which featured traditional chants and dancing. Harry delighted the crowd with his speech as he said hello in Fijian and sampled kava, a local drink. Harry said, Bula Venica. The Duchess and I look forward to meeting as many of you as possible during the next two days and celebrating the links and close friendship between Fiji and the United Kingdom. Meghan looked at her husband adoringly as he drank kava from a bowl. The drink is made from a mashed plant root in the Yakona Vekaturiga. The Duke and Duchess traveled by charter flight to Fiji's capital of Suva, following the first leg of their 16-day overseas tour in Australia. Harry and Meghan were met at Suva's Nasauri Airport by Melanie Hopkins, the High Commissioner and Chief of Protocol, Jonathan Itagivata and the Duke and Duchess were introduced to the Han Frank Bainamra, Fiji's Prime Minister and his wife, Maria, Rotimu Mukepa, leader of the opposition, Alessandro Trapia, the High Commissioner's wife and Rear Admiral William Napoto, commander of the RFMF. Prince Harry is following in the footsteps of Princess Diana in his dedication towards helping others and those who are in need according to Gary Marwick, one of the UK's most eminent palm readers. Mr Marwick, who claims to have read over 20,000 palms during a 20-year career, adds that according to his reading, the prince possesses physical courage and is an adventurer. He told Express.co.uk, Harry follows in his mother's footsteps. Throughout Harry's life he will always be dedicated towards helping others and those who are in need, both individually and in groups. His hand shows, as do some of the other royals' hands, that Harry may also hold back his emotions at times, but he will give much to others. Like his mother, Prince Harry is well known for his charitable activities, which have included founding the St. Tibal Charity in 2006 to help children suffering from HIV-AIDS and launching the Invictus Games for injured service personnel. Princess Diana was a prominent campaigner on behalf of victims of HIV-AIDS, landmines and cancer. However, according to Mr. Marwick, his mother also left a more physical mark on the prince. He explains, on Harry's right hand there is a mark or scar showing, where it indicates that something significant happened and changed his life at an early age. This was most likely the death of his mother. Princess Diana was killed in a Paris car crash on August 31, 1997, when Prince Harry was just 12 years old. Mr. Marwick went on to detect a number of other personality traits from Prince Harry's palm. He said, Harry's hand shows that he has physical courage, and possibly a little aggression at times. It shows that even though he will always return home, Harry can easily spend time away from home and other countries as an adventurer. By contrast, his elder brother Prince William will always appreciate being home after returning from his travels. Prince Harry served two tours of Afghanistan, in 2007-8 and 2012 although the first was cut short after it was reported by foreign media. He was the first royal to serve in a conflict zone since Prince Andrew during the Falklands War. 
Mr. Marwick also believes he can determine key points in the prince's life from his palms. He explains, on Harry's hands, it shows he really became independent in his late twenties, possibly around the age of twenty-eight years old. This was perhaps an emotional time for him with making decisions in his life regarding family, friends and relationships. There will be a significant change, which will affect Harry's life, which will take place in his late forties. Mr. Marwick and a third-generation palm reader, following the path set by his mother and grandfather. As well as his consultancy work he has made numerous media appearances, including on Sky TV and BBC Radio 4. Meghan Markle was spotted boating around Cindy Harbour with Prince Harry yesterday and for the first time on a royal outing, the Duchess donned a pair of white sneakers. The Duke and Duchess of Sussex are on their first major joint tour of Australia and on day six they took to the water to watch the Invictus Games sailing competition. Meghan used the occasion to rock a pair of Veja V10 sneakers and the chosen brand is no coincidence. Veja is an environmentally conscious French shoe brand committed to producing sneakers with completely sustainable materials, including a range of vegetable tanned leathers, organic and fair trade cotton, recycled plastic, wild rubber, jute and hemp. Their shoes are also ethically produced in their Brazilian factory. The sneakers were in keeping with the former TV star's environmentally conscious viewpoint, and it is no secret the Duchess is a keen fan of ethically sourced vegan-friendly products. Along with her shoes, the Duchess sported a black and yellow waterproof Invictus Games jacket. Keeping her protected from the wind, she wore a black polo neck jumper underneath her jacket. Matching the jacket, she wore a pair of skinny black jeans, stopping above her ankles and showing off her slender limbs. Her glossy brunette hair was pulled back in a chiclo bun, with wispy strands of hair hanging down. The newlyweds, who are expecting their first child in the spring, attended a series of engagements yesterday morning related to the Invictus Games. The competition was founded by the Duke of Sussex, and will feature more than 500 competitors from 18 countries. However, it is understood Meghan will not take part in any engagements on Fraser Island today as her pregnancy is taking its toll, according to Prince Harry. A source said, after a busy program, the Duke and Duchess have decided to cut back the Duchesses slightly for the next couple of days, ahead of the final week and half of the tour. Kensington Palace said Meghan was not unwell, but Palace aides felt it was best to cut back the Duchess's engagements following her pregnancy announcement. A royal aide said, she's feeling fine, but resting. It has been reported the Duchess will rest and relax at the award-winning Kingfisher Bay Resort while her husband is expected to attend several royal engagements on the seventh day of their Oceania tour. Pregnant Meghan Markle was absent from the morning engagement on day six of the Duke and Duchess's royal tour of Oceania following a hectic five days. The Duchess of Sussex was due to join Prince Harry to support the Invictus Games cyclists but decided to cut back on her duties after a jam-packed start to the tour. A royal aide said, she's feeling fine, but resting. The royal couple are six days into their tour of Oceania which will see them visit Australia, New Zealand, Fiji, and Tonga. The aide added, after a busy program. The Duke and Duchess have decided to cut back the Duchess's schedule slightly for the next couple of days, ahead of the final week and a half of the tour. The Duke will attend the cycling as scheduled this morning, and the Duchess will join him for this afternoon's engagements. The Duke will continue with the engagements on Fraser Island as planned. The pregnant Duchess, who announced she will be having a baby last week, had a late night on Saturday after the Invictus Games opening ceremony started later than expected due to weather. Meghan is now expected to miss a series of events over the remainder of the tour. A source said they just want to pace her as both she and Prince Harry have a lot of events left. Prince Harry told competitors that Meghan is resting back at home during his morning event. Being pregnant takes its toll he added. However. The Duke and Duchess will attend a reception held by the Australian Prime Minister Scott Morrison later today.
Meghan is now expected to skip some of the events during the couple's planned visit to Fraser Island on Monday. The couple were expected to visit the island's rainforests, attend a welcome to country smoking ceremony with the traditional owners of Kagari, the Butchola people and the premier of Queensland, visit one of the island's lakes. The pair will then travel to Kingfisher Bay by boat. Kensington Palace is yet to announce whether any engagements after day six and seven of the tour will be changed. Meghan is still expected to travel with Harry to Fiji and Tonga but it is possible there may be some adjustments to her program there as well. Oh, <laughs> my